a training, even though I will pass for you some basic concepts, but it's more like a workshop. So if you still don't have pen and paper on your hands, get it, okay? And make sure you're gonna have um, that all written down. And next time you come to a goal setting training, I will give you guys a suggestion, just because I had so many trainings that they were goal trainings, and I have so many media notebooks on Herbalife that I begin to be like, in which one did I take note of this or I took note of that? So what I did, and this was general suggestion, I got a pretty journal that can fit on my purse or on a bag for the guys, that it's kind of mobile. And Jimron said for me to write all my goals in that journal. So I have this journal that is basically just my dreams and goals journal. It's, I don't take notes or anything, just my dreams and goals journal. And I carry this with me because Jimron talks about this day that he went to Spain and it was on his list to go to Spain. And he talks about when the wheels of their plane touched down, I opened my journal and I checked. And it gives me goosebumps, right? Because that's what goals are about, you being able to check. The bucket list. Yeah, right? But like, what is more exciting than you being able to check <coughs> in this spot, right? Like, check, Eiffel Tower, I saw it, check, right? So that, then I did, I did that. I developed a journal that is just for my goals. And every time I do a goal workshop, I do it this journal. And I do it every year. So I have like all my years of goals in here so I can go back. So next time, have a little journal for now. Take notes where you have. Then you buy a pretty journal and you write back on your journal, okay? So what we're going to do to start our goal sets is we're going to start with gym roll. So I've selected a, a short, it's about I think seven minutes, uh, video from gym roll that he will tell you a few things that are the things that we're going to cover. okay? So we're going to start with the man himself. Let me give you the day to turn your life around. Just put me as I can. I got four, I got four parts to the day to turn your life around. Then we're finished. Number one, one. disgust. Disgust. Disgust is a negative emotion, but it can have a very positive, powerful effect. Disgust says, I've had it. What an important day that could be. I've had it.
Here's the third, the desire, wanting too bad enough. Who knows the mystery of that? We don't know. But here's something I do know. Sometimes desire waits for a trigger, waits for something to happen. Who knows what the happening may be? A song, the lyrics, a movie, the dialogue, a seminar, a sermon, a book, an experience, confrontation with an enemy, a conversation with a friend who finally levels with you. Whatever the experience it is, it's so valuable. And here's my best advice. Welcome all experiences. You never know which one is going to turn everything on. Don't put up the walls. The same wall that keeps out disappointment keeps out happiness. Take down the walls. Go for the experience. Let it teach you. And here's the last one. Resolve. Resolve says I will. Two of the most powerful words in the language. Benjamin Disraeli said, nothing can resist a human will that will stake its existence on its purpose. Shortly put, I'll do it or die. Best definition of resolve I got from a little junior high girl, Foster City, California. I'm going through some words one day. I got to this one and I asked the kids, who can tell me what resolve means? Some didn't know, some tried. Interesting. The last one was the best. Little girl about three old back, she said, I think I know Mr. Owen. I said, what? She said, I think resolve means promising yourself you will never give up. I said, that's the best I've ever heard. She's probably giving seminars somewhere today, right? That's the best I've heard. I asked the kids, how long should a baby try to learn how to walk? How long would you give your average baby? Before you say, hey, enough, enough, no. Any mother in the world would say, you're crazy. My baby is going to keep trying, what? Until, what a magic word. I want you to write it down. Until, promise yourself you'll read the books until your skills change. You'll go to seminars until you get a handle on it. You'll listen to it until it makes sense. You'll go for it until you understand it. You'll practice it until you develop the skill. Never give up until... However long that is, step by step, piece by piece, book by book, word by word, apple by apple, walk around the block, walk around the block, go for it. Don't miss the chance to grow and resolve that you'll pay the price until you learn, change, grow, become. Then you'll discover some of life's best treasures when you pay that. So I, I would normally give time for us to talk about it, but today I won't. Not because I don't want to hear what you thought of it, because I know we would get precious and stuff, but just because of the time. So in a longer workshop, we can talk about the video. But basically, we are. Those are the points that we're going to talk about before we set our goals, right? And, you know, when you think about the things Jerome said in there, I think one of the most, I don't know about you, for some people a big driving force is that driving force that we talked about with this guy, right? Have you guys ever felt that in your life? That you had like a situation or something that you just had that feeling of like, enough is enough, never again. Have you guys felt that before, right? And we know what type of driving force that has. So when you think about your goals and when you think about what we're gonna do here, it's important that you think first where you are today. Okay? And this is an exercise that you want to cause yourself, and you may not do that today, so you can write right now, but if something comes to your mind, write it down, or just write down the question. But think about where you are today, right? Today, the place you are in your life is the place you want to be. Maybe a few things are, maybe a few things aren't. You need to acknowledge it, right? You need to think what in your life is good, what in your life is not good, and the first step for you to create change is accept that where you are today is a result of the decisions you have made in the past. And when I joined Herbalife, that was a hard one to swallow because I didn't think anything had to do with me. I thought everything was to do with someone else, you know? It was my mom, it was my dad, it's the economy, it's because I didn't go to university, it's because of this, it's because of that. It was hard for me to hear that where I was was a result of my decisions. Okay, so that's the first step for you. 
Think about what you have in life today. How do you feel about your life? What do you like? What do you don't like? Okay, what are the things that are in there for you? Okay? So here's the exercise. It's what we call the rear mirror exercise. That before you move forward, you have to first look back. Right? So make that view. What were, and some of you are not pretty young, so for some of you, you've got kind of the shorter term. But think like five years ago, right? Where was your life? Think about what decisions you made. What things happened to you? How did you deal with whatever happened to you? And remember this, I know that when I came to Herbalife, because of the place I came from, like just overall, uh, I didn't have a lot of confidence. I had given up already in every single dream I ever had. And all I ever heard was like, this can't be done, this can't be done, this is not for you. Like, you know, I didn't have much of like the confidence like some of you have, right? So for me, when I start this kind of exercise, they were very hard because, Sounds pretty bad, but for me to find good things was hard. It was, I would have to think of a volleyball game that we won, like pretty silly stuff. So like for me, it was a hard exercise. So if you're coming from an experience that you have been through some failures, no problem, right? They don't mean that your future is gonna be like that. If you come from some successes, that's great. So Jim Rohn say that the best way for you to look at the past is so you can apply it into the future. And what do you think that means, right? That means both ways. If you have failures in the past, you look at them, you learn your lessons, and you apply the lessons into the future. If you have successes in the past, you also look at what was good about that, what contributed for you to experience that success, and you apply it for the future. But if people don't do that, then the past can become a burden, right? Or they are living in the past because they experience more successes than they have today, or they are letting that past weigh them down. So you gotta first look back to see how that is influencing your today and how that can apply in your future. Make sense for you guys? Okay? So that's your first step in there, okay? There we go, I covered that already. Then after you do the exercise, you go to the next <coughs> step. That is the decision making process, okay? So what are the options you have when you're analyzing the situation you have in life today, right? One, if where you are, it's not where you want to be. Oh, sorry. I went completely happy there. If where you are is not where you want to be, you make the decision of changing. You can make the decision of continuing the same. And the decision of letting things as is is actually a pretty big decision, right? Because in life, it's not growing, it's dying. There's no the same in life. Would you guys agree with me? That's against nature. Nothing stays the same. Or it's going up, or it's going down. So it's just a matter of you deciding what is your choice, right? What do you want to do with the future that is ahead of you? And when you think about the power of dreams, why do you guys think it's important to have dreams? Is it important to have dreams? We are grown-ups. But like, isn't dreaming something for kids? You dream when you're watching Disney movie? No? No one ever told you to care about Right? Like, why is it important? Do people go in life talking about dreams? How often someone asks you, What's our, what are your dreams? Do you guys have those conversations with people? A few of you? Man, you're lucky. Right? Are, is that what people are talking about on the water cooler? Are they talking about what is the next dream they're going to realize? Or are they talking about the bill they haven't paid yet? What are people talking about? Right? So why do you think it's important to have dreams? To motivate yourself, good. What else? That's all. Hope. To have something to wake up in the morning, right? To to believe that there's hope for something maybe better than yesterday. What else? You can measure your progress on it. So for you progress, you have a dream and you reach it. Mm-hmm. Right? All of those are true. Like dreams are going to motivate you. Dreams are going to you know, give you hope. Are going to give you like that measurable progress. right? I think, I don't know, I could be wrong. I think a life without dreams is a pre pretty boring life. I don't know if this is the only one I have or not. But I don't want to risk it. right? Might as well look back and be able to say that you did some different things in life. But here's what Jim Rohn say, and I love this. 
Jim Rohn says that dreams are like magnets. Okay? And what are magnets? Like if you have a strong magnet, what does the magnet do? They attract. Right? The word that he uses is they pull. Right? So people that don't have a compelling future, normally they're kind of living in the past. They're talking about, do you know people that they talk about when they were a teenager and life was good? Like, do you know those people? Right? So dream, Jim Rohn says this, the stronger the dream, the stronger the pull. And the dream, if you have strong enough dreams that they are strong magnets, they will pull you through. What will they pull you through? Do you have hard days? How do you get through hard days if you don't have dreams? <clears throat> do you get depressed? Do you get like pretty bit down and you're going like, people ask, how's it going? You say, it's going. Right? Have you been there? I know I have. So what is it that will pull you through hard times? Will pull you <coughs> through talents? Will help you to make good, d difficult decisions? Because we will have to make difficult decisions. What is it that will help you? The stronger the dream, the stronger the pull. You guys get that? Right? So if ever in your life, in Herbalife or in whatever things in life, if you're feeling you don't have enough to go through, and you begin to feel like, how am I going to make it through the day? Sit down and look at your goals, because they're probably not strong enough. Right? So the stronger the dream, the stronger the pull. Okay? And Jim Brown says this, right? When you know what you want, and you want it bad enough, you find a way to get it. Have you guys experienced that in your life before? It doesn't matter how big or how small, but that you really, really wanted something and somehow you got it done. And at the end, even you were like, I don't even know how I made this happen, but I did it. Have you guys felt that before? Right? So that, that's very important. Knowing what you want is what's going to help you actually to get there. Okay? So here there's just a few quotes. But I know I've read, I don't know if you guys have heard of Paulo Coelho. He's a Brazilian, yeah? Okay? He's a Brazilian writer, so he has a book called The Alchemist. I read that book when I was like 14, I think. And that was one of the biggest, I'm so blessed that I read that young. Because he says on that book this, he says, when you want something and you want it bad enough, the entire universe will conspire in your favor to make it happen. And it's just a more magical way to say the same thing, right? That we hear about the law of the attraction or whatever. But when we want something and we really want it, things will fall into place to make it happen. So how important it is for you to know what you want? Is that important? Right? You are always going to get what you want 100% of the time. And then you have to be careful with what you're wanting. Because sometimes it's too little. Right? Or sometimes it's bad. Sometimes you have bad thoughts on your mind. Right? So all of that is important. Okay? So here you have main reasons that dreams die. Okay? The main reason that you give up on your dreams it's because you've believed someone, or even worse, you believed yourself that you couldn't do it. Have you ever talked yourself out of something that you really wanted it? Like you see a shoe, and it's like, oh, it's so pretty. Yeah. Oh, but you don't need it. Oh, but it's so pretty. But you don't need it. And you go home, when you go back, they sold out. And you're like, right? It's a silly example, but it's just to illustrate that we talk ourselves out of things as well. We have Jim Rohn, and today I'll say Jim Rohn a million times, okay? Because that's obviously my biggest reference when it comes to goals and dreams and everything. But Jim Rohn says this, he says that we are always so concerned with the thief that is going to steal our wallet. What about the thief in your mind? That voice that says you can't do it. That's too big. That's not for you. And you believe that voice, right? Or you will believe people that when you tell them, I remember you in your theater, Yes. Right? With the yeah. project. I don't remember the details, but I remember the theater. Yeah. Because I remember thinking exactly that. If this girl goes out in the normal universe and tell people what is her dream, how many people will look at her and say, go get it, girl. You can do it. <coughs> Most of the people will look at her crazy girl. Yeah, she's a yeah, dreamer. Yeah, people laugh about it a lot. Right? <laughs> don't they? Yeah, definitely. But They do, right? Have anyone ever said that to you? Maybe like, oh, you're a dreamer. As that's a negative thing? So people will talk you out of things, right? So you've got to be careful with that. You've got to be careful with people's opinion, with what they say. The most important thing that you're going to learn with Herbalife is whatever dream you have, whatever you want to do in Herbalife, even if it's like selling a product, recruiting someone, it's not important that they buy your story. 
it's important that you don't buy their story, right? It's not important that they believe you can do it. It's important that you don't believe them when they say that it can't be done, right? So always be very focused on that, okay? So when you're thinking about your dreams, depending on how big or how small they are, you've got to remember that it's a process, okay? Most of, some of the things are just a decision. Some dreams, you can realize them tomorrow if you decide to, right? But some things, you got to remember that it's like that analogy of you're planting a garden, you're planting a tree. You're going to visualize what you want. It starts with the vision, right? Everything always starts with the vision. Then you're going to go and plant, do whatever actions, whatever projects, whatever plan. You need to start realizing that. Then you have the phase that's taking care of it. You're going to water your garden. You're going to make sure you're taking the weeds out of your garden, okay? Then you watch it grow, and you begin to see the little plant become a bigger plant, become a bigger plant, and eventually comes the time that you can just sit on the shade of your tree, right? And you can enjoy the beautiful tree that is in your backyard. But you need to remember that it's a process. So don't be impatient with your dreams. And Jim Rohn talks about you being the person that they plant, but they don't have the ability to see truth, so they don't wait for the harvest. And if you're not going to wait for the harvest, the next person will take it. Because the tree is going to grow, right? Do you guys understand that? Okay, so have the patience to collect the results of your own efforts, okay? And here, finalizing the, the concept of the dream, and we're going to be switching to our, our workshop pretty fast. I actually, uh, uh, this, this was the main reason I joined Herbal Life, and one of the main reasons I stay on Herbal Life. Because I wasn't a person that just wanted to make money, you know, and Jim Rohn talks about you becoming a millionaire. And, I, and, for, and nowadays, millionaire is not, not really that big of a deal anymore. But imagine this, that he says for you to become a billionaire, right? And I'm living in Brazil, where you have people that they don't have food on the table, where you have, you know, people that they get up in the morning and they don't find a job. And, and when I heard, like, becoming a billionaire, the first thing I thought was, like, why would I? Like, what would I do with that much money? Like, that would be, like, I didn't like that concept. It went against a lot of my beliefs. So it was hard for me to make goals that were about getting rich. Do you guys understand what I'm talking about here? So for me, what made me want to become a millionaire was this. Because Jim Rose said, this, you need to have the goal of becoming a millionaire. Not because of the million, but because of what it would make of you to achieve it. And once you become a millionaire, you can give your million away. But the person you become will be more than the money. That's, that's isn't that good. exciting? Right? That, that's what got, like, I still remember it. That's what got me excited. was not the money, but the person that I would need to become to deserve that money, to earn that money. You know, the abilities. And that's when I was able to write down all my goals, become a millionaire, buy whatever, whatever. You know, because until then I couldn't wrap my mind around it. So every goal you're going to set to yourself is not just the material or whatever it is that the goal is, but it's what it's going to make of you to achieve that goal, okay? So here, we're going to start with our goals, okay? There's, I think, a few more slides, and I'll skip through them because I'm watching the time, and I want to get you guys writing on paper. So don't, don't mind if I skip something. This workshop is a little bit longer when we did it before, so I'm covering the most important points with you guys. So when you think about your goals, the mindset you need to put yourself, and today I just want to give you the tools so you can do it on your own, okay? But the mindset you need to put yourself, and it's even good, like, depend on what inspires you. I know I like some kind of, like, relaxing type of music. Or like if you can sit in a place that is pretty. So sometimes when I go, I remember one of the times I went to do my goals, I went to the Japanese garden, you know, because that kind of setting kind of puts me on a good space. Or like even like, you know, if you're going away and you find a spot on a mountain, I don't know, or even on your room, on like whatever, right? But it's nice if you can put yourself in a quiet place that kind of can inspire you. And you put your mindset on this. If money time, freedom was not an issue, what would your life be like? Okay, that's the mindset. Don't think the how. Just think like if you could have whatever you want, 
If money is not a problem, time is not a problem, you can have whatever you want. What do you want? Okay? So that's a, a good question. Then you're going to write it down. And de at first you don't need to detail it, and that's what I will do with you today. Today we're going to do no details. Then on your own, you're going to want to pick the goals that inspire you the most and detail as much as you can. If you're thinking about your house, you can think it. Like, how is the living room? You walk in, what do you see? You turn right, what is in the right? You turn left, what is in the left? What is the floor? You imagine it to the most amount of details you can, and you write it down, okay? Then the other step that you can do in there is you can think, why do you want it? Do you want the house just because you want to have the biggest house on the block? Do you want the house because you want to hold all your Christmas parties in there with all your family? Like, why do you want it? It could be just because you want to have the biggest house in the block. I don't know. I'm not here to judge anyone. If that moves you, that moves you. But why do you want what you want? And what do you need to become to achieve that? Okay, so those are kind of like the steps you're going to go through with your goals in there, okay? So Mark Hughes always said that you can achieve anything that you want in life as long as you never stop investing in yourself, okay? And today, I don't have a lot of, the, the training is not much about what you have to do to achieve your dreams. The, the training is about your dreaming. Because for a lot of us, when we come here, it's hard. A lot of our dreams are already not quite there, right? So today is to trigger your imagination and your dreams. But remember this, you're not going to get something for not doing anything, right? Why do you think most of the people in life don't realize their dreams? What are your guys' opinions? Why people are not realizing their dreams right and left out there? They don't think they have a way to get them. They don't think they have a way to get them? What else? They no self-confidence. They don't have confidence? They get sidetracked. They get sidetracked, they get distracted. They don't put a date on so that it's just a wish. They, yeah, they don't put a date, so it's just a wish. They're afraid. They're afraid? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think all of those are right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. They don't, they don't have a plan? Okay. Here's my personal opinion, and I'm not saying it's right above you guys. All of those are right. I think they settle. People match their dreams to their paycheck. Because as much as for us, it sounds that that's a hard thing to do. I think that matching my dreams to my Herald paycheck was pretty hard. <laughs> but trust me, it's easier. It's easier to put your dreams down than it is for you to break free and go for it. Right? Because they are afraid. They are scared. They don't have confidence. They get distracted. So they settle. Oh, I didn't want that car anyway. Have you met people that say that? Mm -hmm. Or people that will tell you, why do you want a Mercedes? Like, why? My, my Corolla takes me there, right? To go from point A to point B. Have you seen people that say that kind of stuff? Right? Why would you want that big of a mortgage anyway? Like, two, three bedrooms in a, is enough? Why do you need six? Right? Why do you think it's not? They settle. So your dreams are going to be challenged. You're going to need to prove that you really want what you want and that you want it bad enough. And I remember hearing on the first beginnings of my life that the size of the dream is the size of the obstacle. And if your dreams are big, your obstacles are going to be big. It's not going to come for free. <coughs> the question is how bad do you want it? Make sense to you guys? And that's why your dreams need to be well designed. Because what did I say? The stronger the dream, the stronger they pull. Okay? With the first procrastination, I'll say just one thing that I saw this week and made me think. And again, that depends on what level you guys are with what you're doing. But this week I saw something that said that procrast the procrastination, and I won't remember the words, I'll just tell you what I got out of it. I think it was from Bob Proctor. Uh, the procrastination is just a sign of your fear of realizing whatever it is that you know you're going to accomplish if you actually get the task done. And he was kind of saying that you're just kind of 
like the sabotage thing, right? That you're just afraid that you do this, you're actually going to get what you want and you're scared of getting what you want. So anytime you're procrastination or whatever task you are procrastinating, just think about it. Why you're not doing it and remember why doing it will take you to where you want to go and normally that helps to get to a hat, okay? <coughs> so let's go to our workshop. Let's get started, okay? So what we're going to do in here is this. Uh, I'm going to give you some minutes to write down. I'm going to introduce, before you start writing, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. And then I'm going to time. And I didn't set my fancy music, but you guys can sing in your head. I won't sing for you. So first, we're going to work on short-term goals, okay? Short-term goals are anything from now to one to two years, okay? So short-term goals could be like buying a new computer, could be changing to your next car, not exactly your dream car, could be buying an iPad, uh, could be like, you know, things that you can see that you can get them done with it from now to two years. And for you Herbalifers, you can already even think levels on the marketing plan if you already have that enough in your mind. Because some of you new don't really understand that that much. But the ones that do, you can include that in there, okay? Then you're going to think midterm goals, that are the three to five years goals. Okay, so the ones that will take a little bit more, uh, a little bit of work in there. And then you can think the long term goals are the six to ten years goals. Okay, so those are kind of like the three levels that you're going to be working with. Okay, so here, let's get started. So I'm going to get you extra first. Uh, and we want to write at least 20 goals. Okay, we, we had Shalom in here. And Shiloh will talk so much about that. And if you do this workshop, you're going to come across more than 20 for sure because I'm going to help you to trigger your mind a little bit more in here. But you want to have at least 20 goals that they're very solid for you. Because when I did my goals before, I know I wrote some things that they were kind of just like, you know, you're just feeling in the time. And you're going to write in there like, go see a lion. You know, like I can go to the zoo, see a lion. You know, whatever. Like, you know, little things. But like you're going to get 20 goals that really, really move you. Okay? So right now, I won't talk much because I don't want to distract you. But as you're writing, I will try to give you a few triggers. And you don't need to go on the sequence that I told you. Whatever. Don't think. Go workshop works best if you're not thinking. So whatever pops on your mind, you write down. After we are done, we're going to go and clean it up, okay? But whatever will come to your mind, you write it down. Don't think if it's long, short, whatever. Don't think. Just write things down, okay? So right now, put your mind on that mental space. Put on your mind that space that if money was not a problem, if time was not a problem, if whatever belief systems you have, they're not there. What is it that you want in life? Okay? First things that come to your mind, write down. Okay? Start writing down. What do you want? Remember when you were a child and you just thought that everything in life were possible and that people would ask you, what do you want to do when you grow up? And you would say you want to be an astronaut. You know? Think of times that you're watching TV. And you saw some travel show and you thought it would be cool to go to that place. You know, so think about places that you would, would like to go. Right? So go around the globe a little bit on your mind. Think about places. And it could even be as simple as going to Bend and staying at the fences hotel we there, right? You don't need to be far away. Think about what kind of vacations would your family be having if money and time was not a problem, where would you go? Who would go with you? What kind of activities would you guys make? Where would you stay? Okay. Think about the experiences you would like to have. If you're going to China, you want to have a big tub at the wall of China. Right? But, like, think about, you know, I, I will use Rachel and Taryn example, that they want to go see all the temples in different, in North America, I don't know. I'm not too sure. In the world. In the world. <laughs> there you go. All the temples in the world, right? Like, even, you can even think of those kind of experience, like, 
what places that speak to your heart could be for your religion, could be for your spiritual beliefs, could be because you like theater. What theaters do you want to go in the world? Do you want to go see Broadway shows? Right? Do you have a favorite artist that you would like to go to their concert VIP style all the way with backstage passes? You know? What about your family? Does your family have any dreams that you would like to realize it for them? I remember Noan, one of our president teams that they are from Israel, his dad dream was to go to the Brazil Amazon. And Noan was able to take him there in one of the most expensive resorts in the world. And six months later, he passed away. Right? So like that's the power of dreams, realizing dreams for other people. What are your kids' dreams, the ones that have kids? When you ask your child today, what do they want, what do they tell you? Write them down. Okay? Could be go meet Pluto at Disneyland, that's simple, but maybe your child is more ambitious, they want to go to the moon. When they're older enough, you can send them. <laughs> that, that flight's coming up soon enough. All right? What about the places you would like to leave? Do you have a dream house? If that is something that is important for you. I know some people want to have the big house, the million dollar mansion with the stairs, the indoor pool. I know I want a sunroom, which is that's a Canadian dream. <laughs> I didn't have that dream in Brazil, but here I got new dreams. Right? But for example, I don't care for the big house. I wanna have Jim Rohn play plan that was one house for every season. So I want to have, instead of one big house, multiple house. One for the summer in one place, one for the winter in another place, one for the spring in another place, right? Do you have anyone in your family that you want to help? That maybe you want to buy them a house even before you buy yours, right? What about cars, the boys in the room? Or even the girls, I huh? have <laughs> green cars, right? Yeah, yeah there you go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, some people care for different things, so I'm just throwing ideas at you guys. What about cars, right? Or motorcycles, or boats. Jen wants a boat, right? What are your hobbies? Is there anything you want to learn? I want to. I want to learn how to surf, right? Is there anything, any skill you want to develop? Any new language you want to have, okay? Maybe you want to learn to play guitar. Maybe you want to learn to speak Spanish. Maybe you want to go bug jumping, skydiving, swimming with the dolphins. Right? So think about the, the, the things that you want to learn and develop on yourself. I know that my goals always <coughs> have little qualities. I was watching Jim Rohn and I was thinking I need to add to my goal list, become 30% of Jim Rohn. <laughs> if I can be 30% of Jim Rohn, that would be so cool. Right? Become a better speaker. You know? Develop leadership skills. What skills do you want to learn? How many books do you want to read? This will sound, I don't know, I shouldn't say this will sound silly. One of my dreams is to write a book. I don't care if anyone's going to read it. I just want to have enough content that I can actually make it more than 10 pages. <laughs> right? But that's one of my dreams. Write a book. Okay? Keep writing. Don't stop. How are you guys doing? How many of you guys have there? Does anyone have more than 20? Right. right. 19. Yeah. It, it sounds easy, but it can be hard at first, okay? Think about, you know, like, I, I, I would try to trigger a few more experience for you guys, but think about, like, I think that one that gives a lot of things for you to think is places. So don't write something like travel all continents. That's too generic. Like, write where are your maps go places. Right? Like, I know for me a must is Egypt, I want to go see the pyramids, I know I want to go to China, I want to go to every continent, but I have a few places that they're picking down, right? I want to go 
like Europe for sure, I want to go to Italy, I want to go to Portugal, I want to see the penguins in Patagonia, but I want to go there because of the penguins, not because of the Patagonia, right? So think about that, like would you like to go to a safari in Africa? Think about the things you want to do for others, right? Like one of our uh, distributors was sharing about she wants to have a project in Africa. I know one of the things I want to do is have a kind of a leadership school for kids, right? I want to help animals in Brazil. There's a lot of street animals in Brazil, right? So what do you want to do? Like you've mentioned the church participation. Those can all go to your goals list. Do you want to do things for your communities, right? Do you want to have an impact in a certain kind of community? Do you want to be able to start contributing with a monthly amount every month? Or like, you know, and again, go back to your family. Think about the people in your family that you would like to give back to, okay? I would trigger the lady's mind a little bit. Think about shopping. <laughs> I know one of my goals is to take my mom and my sister shop. I don't even know if they want it, but I want it, and I don't think they're going to complain. So to take my mom and my sister shopping at Rodeo Drive, Pretty woman style, carrying the bags, <laughs> and me just paying everything. They don't even have to look at the price tag. Right? I mean, it's pretty, uh, I don't know what the word I would say. Some people could look at that and judge it, right? But for me, I can only imagine how much fun that would be. And I can only imagine how it would feel. It's not for the things. Like, I know for my mom. She would never even imagine shopping for something without looking at the price. So I want to give her that experience. But imagine how fun it would be. Man, like, just like, you don't even care. You look, you like it, you buy it. Right? So, and Rodeo Drive just because of Pretty Woman. So, could be at Sears. I don't care. But, mm -hmm. you know, I want to go Pretty Woman style. It sounds silly for some people, but it's how, what it means to you. Right? So think about the guys, what experiences would you like to have with your brothers or with your dad or with your best friends? And I don't know what you guys want, so I, I, I know for Taryn, taking them to Vegas wouldn't be appealing, right? So for Taryn, probably, I don't know, do you guys like hunting or, so think about a hunting fiesta, right? For some other people, going to Vegas hangover style would be pretty cool, I don't know. But think about that, Scott's like laughing at that one, <laughs> no? You know, I'm just throwing things at you guys. Keep thinking. Don't get too distracted on my imagination here. Think around things, places, people, skills, experiences. Those would be almost like most of the categories. Health. Think about health. For us, for life distributors, think about you want to run a marathon. There you go. Do a triathlon. Your level 10 body. Right? Live until you're 100 healthy. Okay? And you can think about your people too. Help someone in your family with their health. Those can be dreams, right? I know one thing a lot of president teams do in Brazil, and I would like to do that one day, is they just donate shakes to orphanages. They just give like a truckload of shakes every month for the kids. Or imagine giving shakes for a senior home. That would be pretty cool, right? Being able to give them night works every night. <laughs> would be cool. Okay. Place, things. Skills, experiences, people, health. Are we doing? Anyone past 20? Oh, yeah.
ya. And I thought about one more, then maybe I don't know. I like that stuff, but think of technology as well. You people that like technology, like a home theater. I want to have a wicked home theater. <laughs> yeah, it's hot. Like your equipment can go to go less. But even simple things like an iPad. That's a short term goal. But you know, it's a goal. Yeah, have a DJ. I want to have a personal chef. Yeah, that I do. I wrote that down. <laughs> 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 yeah. And it's have a maid. That, that was one of yeah. my biggest like, are you really a nanny? Yeah. <laughs> I had on my list before having a Brazilian nanny. I had that before. Right? So, like, you know, like, think about those things, too. Like, I, I really want to have a chef. Like, that's a must on my list. Right? So, did you guys, how is everyone doing? How many of you guys have them? How many? 23. 23. Good. Yeah. 21? 20-something. 20 20 26? 26? 26? 28 or something. 27? 30? 20? 30? 31? 30? 30? 31? 30? 31? 34? 30? 30? 34? 30? 34? 34? 34? Oh! Oh, come on, Scott. I thought you were like flying through it. Funny. Okay, good. Okay, good. So at least most of us have stretched ourselves to 20, okay? But you guys can even think a little bit further and try to get more gym room, say, to get to 50. That's like gym room getting to 50. But then you gotta stretch. Like for me to get to 50, I had to break down Europe in every single country. I'm not just call it Europe. You know? <laughs> so you gotta like stretch yourself. But again, remember spiritual. You know, I don't wanna push much on that area here just because we're in a group. But remember spiritual is like even whatever, right? So stretch your imagination. But you guys did great because we did just about 15 minutes and you guys were able all to pass 20, okay? So now what you're gonna do with your goals. And here, like you, you guys that saw Rudy talking about it, I think some of you uh, may have heard this, but this is a very classic story to illustrate the power of the dreams. Because there's one of uh, German's clubs on Herbalife, okay? Uh, it's Dante, that's the German's club, or Doran? Doran. Doran. They are queens, I never know who is who. But anyway, Doran Andre, he talks a lot about goals and dreams. Up. And he talks about the, we are, we're always here talking about the importance of vision, the importance of knowing what you want. And he has a classic story because the house was like his biggest dream, it was the house. And he bought like the land for the house and he had that dream of the house. And he made this, uh, how do you guys call it in English? When you do the design, what you're looking at. The blueprint of the house, okay? And he worked with staring at this blueprint. Like this was on his wall, this was everything he does, he was always looking at this, right? So he had the perfect blueprint of this house, and here you have the house. So he did exactly the house that was the house of his dreams, without any, um, yeah, but that's, yeah, that's what I want to say, but that's co without any compromise. You know, it's not like, oh, the window is not exactly the one I wanted. The gate's not exactly the one I wanted. It's everything exactly what he wanted. And really told me a story that for me that was an interesting story because they live in California, so people see this house, and obviously there's people that they always want something, and they think there's a price tag for everything. So the guy that is the owner of Oakley, you know, the sunglasses, knocked on the house. I don't think it was him, probably one of these people and offered them and said, I want this house. How much do you want? I will pay whatever you want. And then he said, the house is not for sale. This is my dream house. There's no price on this house. And they insisted. It was like, whatever you want. How much do you want? I'll buy it. And he didn't sell. Because that reinforces to you what is the price of your dream. Right? Is there a price for you being able to build the house that you worked so hard every day of your life, be inspired by that, to have that dream house for your family, right? Can you put a price on that? Okay, and I have here the pictures of the insides and stuff, but that's the view, I would take the view. So let's finish here. Important for you is knowing that on Herbalife, it's 
probably one of the only places in life that I remember hearing this right on the beginning of my herbal life story that they said whatever dream you have whatever it is that you want there's someone inside herbal life that has accomplished that already and it sounds pretty bold to say it because we think our dreams are like so unique right but it's amazing for you to realize that and i remember having that little moment because one of my dreams is to be able to travel with private jets and the reason I want to travel with a private jet is because I want to take my dog. And that kind of makes me feel like crying. It's kind of silly, you know, but every time I leave home, I have to leave her. Like the kids, you can eventually take them on the airplane, but the dog, you can't, right? She's a boxer. I can put her in a little puppy bag, like, you know, <laughs> like she would take the entire seat and people would be scared of her. And I always say that, and I remember we went to an LDW and I told that to Jen. And when we got on the LDW, sure enough, Danny Edwards was on stage and she said that that was one of her dreams, was to travel on a jet, to be able to take her dog. It was like, see, like, there's almost everything we want. Someone else wants it and they have done it. So believe that on Herbal Life, anything that you want is possible. Anything you can accomplish in here, if you're willing to do the work, have the commitment, and try to... I don't like this sentence too much, but in other words, pay the price for it, okay? Let me see if I have anything else here. This lady, she's the number one distributor on Herbalife for two or three years now? No, 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 that's not her anymore, sorry. It's the other lady. I can, it's not Raquel. It's, uh, what is her name now? No, it's the... Anyway, it doesn't matter. One of the Mexican founder circles, okay? And I remember her from the summits. This is the second year in a row that she's number one distributor. Her sure, bonus Jack. Right here. She has the blonde hair. Oh, blonde hair. Right? But I don't know if she just, she just changed her hair. Could be. Anyway, she, two years in a row, she is the number one distributor. And her bonus check, her 1% check, is a $2 million check. And this lady had some kind of home-based business before. Same home mom. She was a stay-at-home mom, had a little business. Then she got introduced to Herbalife. Her husband was the negative husband all the way. I think he was a banker or something like that. All the way negative husband, right? She's on Herbalife for 20 years. And she became one of the, no one of the number one distributor in the world. And it was quite surreal to see at the summit because she was sharing her story. And she was talking about him being a negative husband. And with no disrespect, but here he is with his mustache. And he's like holding that $2 million check. And he's not even smiling. <laughs> like, you know, he's holding like this. And then she goes to say, but today he holds the check. <laughs> and I was like laughing, right? Because they're like, and he didn't even smile at, at her joke. But you know, it's kind of like anything that you want to accomplish, regardless of who you are, regardless of where you come from. And Marcuse used to say, regardless of your skin, regardless of your background, regardless of your skills, whatever you want you can accomplish in here. So there's so much value in doing this because one of the main reasons people will stop doing what they're doing and they will get distracted like parents said, they will go back to the regular life and settle is because they forgot their dreams. It's because something happened that they convinced themselves that it can't be done, that it's too hard, it's too difficult, it's too painful, it's not worth it. But if you know the value of your dreams, I don't think you're going to come to a point in your life that you're going to think it's not worth it, right? And Jim Rohn talked about that, that decision. That I, I, I think it's here somewhere. <coughs> oh, there you go. No, it's not here. But I remember this quote from Jim Rohn that really is what never made me even consider it, stopping her life. Jim Rohn says of the man that he sees a mountain and he decides he's going to climb the mountain. And he resolves, right? That's the word Jim Rohn used. He resolves, this is my mountain. I am going to climb it. You're going to find me at the top or dead at the bottom from trying. Okay? And if you take that approach to your dreams, and in my case, I took that approach, just the herbal life dream as like the dream of the president team member of this is my mountain. I am going to climb one step at a time and you're going to find me at the top or dead at the bottom. 
but I'm not going to give up. And if you're going to be able to associate Herbalife to the key for your dreams, do you think there's going to have anything that is going to be so hard that it's going to make you give up? Can you guys even imagine that as a possibility? If you know this is the way for you to accomplish the things that are on your list, is it going to be worth it? Right? And then you have in here the step that they talk about you imagining how your dreams accomplished. Okay? So I'll just skip to the end because I want to show you the incomes with the Herbalife Marketing Plan because I want you to take note of that because this is going to be a key for you. So now that you have your dreams and you can sit down with your mentor to wrap it up, okay? What we need to do with the dreams is not just dream, because if you're just writing them on paper, it's kind of like things that we've done before, right? Like they are just your vivid imagination. Now we need to turn them into something that you can believe, that can have a plan to back it up, and that you know what it takes to achieve it. Because then you really can go to sleep at night knowing you're taking one step towards your dream every day. And this is a question I was taught to ask myself was today, the activities I have done, have they put me one step closer to my dreams? Yes or no? Right? That's a powerful question for you. Did I move one step closer to my dream today? If you feel yes, you can go sleep happy. If you feel no, you can make a plan for a better day tomorrow. Okay? But you need to have that plan. So what we want to do, you want to describe your dreams. Give them details. Bring that to your coach. Put amounts on it. Your trip, how much does that cost? Your house, how much does that cost? Break it down to what is the income you need to support the dreams that you want. How much money do you need to support the lifestyle you want to live, the school your kids want to go, the vacations you want to have. Once you come to a number, you can identify how far do you need to go on Herbalife. And you can know what position of the marketing plan will allow you to have what kind of life you want to have in each stage of your life. Make sense to you guys what I'm saying or am I speaking Greek? Makes sense, right? So there you have distributors. You're just getting started. So you make anywhere from zero to $500, $1,000 a month, okay? Supervisors, you make anywhere from $500 to $2,500. Okay. Then you have get teams, you make anywhere from $2,500 to $6,000. Millionaire team, I want you guys to think more about this because it's one of my motivations. Don't get me wrong, get team, we make good money already, better than a lot of the jobs out there. But Noan tells me this, he says that millionaire team is the end of poverty. Because right? from there on, really, you begin to have a good lifestyle, right? Because the income gets much more comfortable in terms of residual income. So seven is conservative. Normally, a millionaire team makes more than 10, okay? So you think between seven to $16,000 a month. And, and then you have president team that is a minimum $20,000 a month. And here you're thinking residual income. That is that income that is not the one depending on you. So if you wanna go travel the world in 360 days, you can. Nine months honeymoon like Shilom has, no problem. Because the money is in the mail. Do you guys understand that? So now, with that information, you can just choose by when. How long do you want to take to realize your dreams? <coughs> what is the deadline for the dreams you have? And put it on the marketing plan. Once you identify the marketing plan, we can give you the plan. Because now it becomes measurable, trackable, and you can know what daily activities you need to do to get where you want to get. Do you guys understand that? Does that excite you guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah? yeah? Do you, like, it, it's always, it excites me all the time. So I don't know if you guys are just in shock of putting your dreams on paper. Like if it's just like, oh, I can actually do it, right? I don't know what's going on in your guys' minds, but I hope this was helpful for you to be able to put that down, okay? Now, if you want to do the gym room workshop, even on YouTube, you can find it. I think I have it on our team page somewhere. I will look. But even if you just go on YouTube and you do Jim Rohn Goals Workshop, they have parts A, part B. 
and it's about a two hours workshop but he gives you much more steps than I was able to give you today but I kind of gave you a good ball for you to work on but if you want to detail it down look for Jim Rohn's girls workshop that is pretty pretty good okay anyone has any questions or any comments anything they want to share before we close our, our, our session does anyone want to share anything with their dream?